dear audience, uh, I also would like to um, thank the organizers for this opportunity. And it's always so nice to see so many young faces who are interested in science. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not going to be that scientific because I would like to raise your attention more to uh, some other fun uh, parts of, uh, of scientific work. And we're going to travel around the neuropeptide. And first of all, uh, to make sure you all understand what neuropeptides are, I'm sure you know that peptides are shorter than proteins with fewer amino acids from a few to a few dozen amino acids. And we have a lot of members also synthesized in the nervous system. So these are the neuropeptides. But most of them do not only occur in the nervous system, but in the entire body. And uh, they usually undergo a lot of post-translational modifications. We already heard uh, a talk about these modifications. They usually belong to families based on similar functions or structures. And the neuropeptide we are dealing with is also a member of such a peptide family. Here you can see an example of different neuropeptide families. They have a lot of different actions. So it's a very diverse area of research. Our uh, a peptide, which is called PICAP, you will see what it is, uh, belongs to this so-called VIP, vasoactive intestinal peptide, secreting glucagon superfamily. So it's also a big family based on structural similarities. And VIP was already discovered uh, in 1970, and only 20 years later was a new member, PACAP, discovered uh, by Professor Arimura, uh, who isolated it from the hypothalamus based on the adenine cyclase activating effect in the hypophysis, in the pituitary gland. That is why the name pituitary adenine cyclase activating polypeptide. But you will see that most of the actions have nothing to do with the pituitary actions. And being at a Nobel Prize uh, or Nobel um, ceremony, here I would like to mention that Dr. Arimura worked together with Professor Shelley, who got Nobel Prize for LHRH discovery. And uh, so this is a pay cup, this is the structure. And as I told you, most of the peptides um, occur not only where they were first discovered, just like PACAP, it occurs in many different parts of the nervous system and the body. So we kind of say it has outgrown or overgrown its name because it has actions also outside the pituitary uh, gland. It has 27 and 38 amino acid forms, so it occurs in two forms in the body. And it occurs everywhere, with highest concentrations in the CNS, endocrine glands, but basically it occurs in many other parts of uh, the body. And this uh, shows the receptors. I'm not going to get into details, but we also do a lot of studies with the receptorial effects. Uh, it has specific and non-specific receptors, and it has a very complex signaling mechanism. Uh, which, of course, I'm not going to get into details about now, uh, all in, involved in neurogenesis, protection, migration, that we are also interested in how to protect neurons. And uh, I was lucky to work with uh, Professor Arimura in New Orleans after the discovery of this peptide. So this is how we started this research. And he believed in PACAP so much that his license plate was pick up 38, New Orleans, and uh, we were also lucky to um, take a picture with his two cars. Uh, 38 was one of them, and 27 uh, was the other car, license plate. So we are interested in, in this puzzle. We already heard about puzzles today as well, how we can fit pick up into this protective network, because pick up has protective effects. And our main focus, focus of our research is how to uh, reorganize this disturbed balance uh, 
when it goes in direction of cell death, how we can dis, uh, organize, dis, disorganize balance, how it can be uh, made better with PACUP or with many other factors. We are also studying other factors. Our research spans from the very early uh, time of life to the very late part. So we, are, we have uh, embryonic studies and also aging studies. So this protective effect uh, and other effects span throughout the lifetime. And I'm going to show you a few examples from the very beginning, uh, from kind of the middle, and from one example from the aging studies. So uh, this is what students like the most, or at least at the beginning when they do not learn a lot of techniques yet, because this they can learn very quickly. So this is uh, one of the first things they really enjoy when they come to the lab, uh, how to stu uh, study neurobehavioral development of newborn rats and mice, and we do not really harm the animals. So they really enjoy this uh, study. And here, for example, we test a lot of things to see how the animals develop. And for example, we test when they open their eyes, on which day, how they develop, how much they weigh, uh, when reflexes appear first, so uh, students can measure on which day they have the grasp reflex with forelimb, hindlimb, or this is a very cute picture taken by one of the students, how they uh, can hold onto a rope. It has a very scientific name, ro rope suspension test for how long they can stay on the rope. Um, or we test many other reflexes, how fast they climb, etc., etc. Or for example, how they place uh, the foot when it's touched, or how they react to a painful stimulus. So we have different tests that we run. And with this, we can see how fast, how uh, well uh, the newborn animals develop. I just show you one graph. After pick up treatment, we noticed that the animals did better in, in different reflexes. So here you can see that there is a difference. So, we did, of course, many other uh, measurements, but uh, uh, this is another uh, very interesting thing. You put the animal in a box, and then you see how the animal discovers, explores the area. And you can see that after pick-up treatment, the animals explore the area much more. They do not only run up and down in one corner, from one corner to the other. So uh, it basically helped the neurobehavior development. And with this, we can say, not only with this, but many other studies and other groups in the world uh, showed that PACUP is a growth factor. So it helps development of the nervous system. Uh, and I would like to show you an example how to use growth factors for injuries. And this is the example of building a house. When you build a house, you use blocks that you don't need later when the house is ready. So growth factors are similar to this. Most growth, growth factor levels decrease after uh, the system is done, after maturation. But if there is an injury, you need the same things when you rebuild the house. And uh, there are several different ways. If there is a total destruction, there is no way you can repair uh, the house or the organism. If there is a partial destruction, then with the help of the growth factors that you use during development, you can help regeneration. And uh, then the same uh, theory is behind prevention, resistance, increased resistance, if the, the levels of the good factors uh, is higher, the levels are higher, then there is more resistance. So a little wind would not blow the house. And uh, so we tested this theory with this. So if there is a little destruction, 
whether we can help with pick-up treatment, whether we can help uh, regeneration and make the injury less. And uh, we did it in a lot of different models. I show you only one, the first one, what we used, which was ischemia of the brain. Here you can see the um, uh, brain vessels, the arteries, and what we do through the carotid artery, we insert a filament to block the middle cerebral artery. And with this, we induce a cerebral infarct, a stroke. Here, I just show you a few pictures. Um, under the operational microscope, we expose the carotid region of the animal. And here, you can see the carotid artery. We ligate the vessels. We make a little hole. You have to be really careful. Uh, and because this vessel is very small. And then we insert the filament and to a certain point, and then the artery is blocked. And you can, uh, with withdrawing it, you can uh, make reperfusion. And then, after the animals wake up, they produce different symptoms, like they turn asymmetrical here, or they twist. Uh, asymmetrical, or here you can see the asymmetrical limb use, because on one side the brain is damaged, so they have asymmetrical. And we can score these symptoms, and then we see how much the infarcted area is with slicing up the brain, and this is uh, we, with a staining, we can see the white area, which is the infarcted area, and you can outline it, and you can measure how big it is. And what you, we see is um, uh, after only 12 hours, it's a very small lesion, but after 48 hours, almost half of the brain is damaged. And um, if we use pick-up treatment, four hours after the occlusion, it was reduced about to half, half of uh, the control infarct size. But eight hours later, we had no effect anymore. This is called therapeutic window within which you can still do something when the lesion is not permanent yet. And then uh, we wanted to see what happens in, in our body with the pickup we have. So the endogenous effects of the peptide. If it's so good given from outside, whether inside the pickup is good as well, and uh, this we can study in so-called knockout mice. If we have mice that do not have this peptide, let's see how they react. And we hypothesized that uh, pick-up knockout mice are more vulnerable because they do not have this protective peptide. And this is what we tested in a lot of different uh, models. I'm not going to list it just so you see that it's a long list where we proved and others also proved that pick-up knockout mice are more vulnerable. Uh, here, just a few examples. Here you see kidney ischemia, normal kidney, and the knockout. You can see these big bubbles. So even if you don't know the kidney structure, it's very apparent that these big bubbles do not look normal. So there is more damage. To the same damage, the knockout mice react with the bigger damage. Or retina ischemia, this is the control animal, and this is the knockout animal. So in the lack uh, of this peptide, so if we do not have pick-up, the lesion to the same insult is bigger. Uh, this is intestin uh, intestinal ischemia. You can see that basically the intestinal surface disappears to the same lesion. Or retinopathy, here the lesion is again bigger. And uh, with this, we proved that endogenous pickup is also protective. And we wanted to see what happens with aging. I told you in the beginning that from development to aging, I'm going to show you one example. So we did a lot of studies uh, in aging animals. And just getting back to this house example, uh, here with aging, just the same if you think of an old house, if you don't do anything, it will be destroyed just by itself. Uh, and the trophic or growth factors are reduced with aging. What happens if we have more higher levels of this trophic factor or other trophic factors? Then 
uh, the aging be uh, begins later or vice versa. If you do not have protective factors, aging can start earlier. And this is what we noticed in pickup knockout mice that um, uh, pickup declines with aging anyway. No knockout mice do not have pickup. Aging will begin earlier. This was our hypothesis, and this is what we could prove. Again, I just show you one picture. Here you can see the uh, uh, young animals. There is no difference, but uh, aging animals already look kind of sick, even without doing any measurements, and the knockout mice. And here you can see we, we tested all organs, from the skin, brain, everything. And here I just show you one example from the kidney. Uh, this is the uh, normal aging kidney. And here, if you look at the glomeruli and this homogeneous pink area is not normal, this is the degeneration called amyloidosis. It's a deposit of amyloid, and it destroys uh, many, many organs, and it's much, much worse and begins earlier in the knockout mice. So we could see that pickup deficiency increases or uh, accelerates, better to say, accelerates aging. So all the protective effects that pickup possesses is decreased, and so we have uh, accelerated aging. We could prove it in different animal models. Uh, I just show you, showed you uh, the mouse model, but uh, it was proven in monkeys and even humans. So uh, in summary, uh, I hope I could convince you that pickup is a protective factor uh, present in us and also given as an outside therapy. And thank you for your attention. Thanks, Adora, for this very nice presentation.